All right, let's get back to the TriMet shit show nonsense. I want to I want to get done with this before the next meeting, which I think is coming up here. Uh, President Simmons, yes. I'm sorry. I don't know if this is a typo, but it's the date at the bottom supposed to be February 23rd, 2022. Yeah. Huh. There we go. February 23rd, 2021. There's that TriMet sloppiness again. Okay, I just wanted to point that out. That okay. Sloppy, there's Probably a sloppy organization over there make tons of mistakes like that. Oh, we're not we're going, going back, back last year. year. <laughs> no, we are not going backwards, no. <laughs> oh, you're absolutely correct, yes. On the actual resolution, it, it, there is a typo, it needs to be 22. Yeah. Good catch, Director Way. It doesn't matter. Thank you. So if there's no other business to come before the board, then I'm going to adjourn the official board meeting. However, um, well, let me first say this. Our next regular scheduled board meeting is March 23rd. And I want the board members and the public to know that it will continue to be a virtual meeting. However, I anticipate... Yeah, the whole goddamn state is back, but you guys aren't back. Your secret society continues to meet in secret. Hand out that pork. And do anything you want, and nobody has any say over what you do. Nobody even cares what you do. Everybody else is on the front lines, but you hide in your little offices. Yay, what an example you set for your community. That beginning with our April meeting, um, we will go back to having in-person board meetings. Um, uh, and that will be after the indoor map. I believe it when I see it. mandate has been lifted. So hopefully, I know I'm looking forward to um, meeting with you all face to face and not um, using technology since I seem to be having more complicated issues. However, today, following this meeting, uh, we're going to have a briefing on the final proposal for the annual update for the business plan provided by Alan Lento. So first, however, I'm going to suggest. All right, so they're going to have a board briefing now. This they haven't. This is like another 45 minutes. Let's see how far I can get through this. Just um, a short break and wanted to. Yeah, go break. Have a break. Good break. Longer break. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, good. Sam is back. Now we're down to 30 minutes. Yeah, stay. Okay. All right. Are we all? <laughs> Good. So much for technology. And then this one is higher. So I have to sit taller. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Is everyone back? Okay. So this morning, oh, would you close the door? Thanks. Now we're getting feed. Um, this morning's board briefing provides a follow-up to the presentation we received last month from Director of Business Planning and Asset Management, Alan Leto. And I know that Alan provided in NextCloud, um, you know, the, the draft of... Yaroslav Mityuk. Is that guy a Russian? He needs to be deported right now. Okay, no Russians, remember? No Russians allowed. Dated business plan, um, and, and you know, required quite a bit of time to to review it. I I do want you to know ahead of time that I submitted written comments um, to Alan um, prior to this meeting, and and you will have the opportunity if you don't have comments for him today to provide him with feedback by just emailing him uh, following. Of this briefing. But um, I want to thank you, Alan, for being with us this morning, and I'm going to turn the briefing over to you. All right, let's hear him. Let's hear what he's got here. I'm sure, this will be completely useless, nothing, bullshit, you know, pie in the sky. But let's listen to it anyway. Great. Thank you, President Simmons. Hopefully, you all can hear me. Um, I appreciate the Ability to present to you the uh, draft business plan for FY23. So this is the plan that would go into effect starting July 1st of 2022 uh, for the five-year period. 
Um, but of course, as, as we all know, things keep changing, so we have to update it each year, and this is the update for this coming fiscal year. Uh, the, the presentation I've got is just a, uh, a little bit of introduction, uh, especially for those of you who have not uh, seen the, the uh, previous year's business plans. And then some excerpts from the plan itself. So the, the full plan is, of course, available in your packet. Uh, this is all a bunch of bureaucracy. It really has no meaning in the real world. I'm sure you know that. But, you know, they have to write this stuff down because this is, this is what bureaucracy and technocracy does. By sometime by the end of today, it will be available online to the public and anybody who is interested in, in looking at it. Uh, and our public comment period, as President Simmons was mentioning, uh, it extends all the way through uh, the end of March, actually, to April 1st. So happy to take comments from anybody any time uh, during that period, and we'll uh, take all of those into account as we are putting sure together you the will. final, right. which we will present to you sure uh, at into the April board meeting. And so if you could advance the slide there. Uh, the, uh, just a few slides just on the background. So why do we have a business plan? Well, this is only the sixth time, the sixth year that TriMet has had a business plan. But the idea is that things are complex. It's a big agency. We're trying to accomplish a lot. We have a lot of team members. And it is absolutely... And what have they actually accomplished, folks? They've cut your bus service by 20% and... I've noticed that things are a little bit more reliable out there. They, I've noticed they have some fill buses now that they never had before. So there's some movement toward the getting back to like the, the horrible system they had before. Let me repeat that. Trimet has never had enough drivers, even when the even when I was there. They were all they always don't want to hire people because. For every person they hire, it's a hundred thousand dollars, and they want that money to go to capital projects and cronyism, not to actual people. It's a crime syndicate, and I hope everybody understands the purpose of government is crime, and that crime is funneling your dollars from your taxes up to the elites to live in luxury while we scramble around like ants critical that we understand our priorities, we discuss our priorities, understand the resources that are needed to, to make progress on those, to better define and align our efforts, and to really connect our purpose and goals and mission to our actions. And so that's the purpose of the business plan. And all of the pages of detail are how we turn. And all of the years that I've been involved with them, None of this stuff that we're watching here translates to anything at the rider or driver level. None of it. Okay, it's it's all bureaucratic nonsense as far as I'm concerned. Turn that into action. The next slide. See, look at this. Look, look at this. Uh, we we talk a lot about alignment, trying to align our efforts, alignment between. You know how long I've been looking at shit like this. Operators, safe and on time. You know how long I've been hearing that? 25 years. Okay? And it never is safe and it's never on time. <laughs> Reliable vehicles. I, I hear a lot of, you know, most of the calls are mechanical problems. Clean buses, right? all the, the various groups within um, uh, TriMet uh, and making sure that we are truly aligned to work together. And this is the classic example, I think, of you know, the majority of what we do is our operators are out in a bus, in a train, in a lift fare transit vehicle every day doing their best to provide safe and on-time service for our customers. But in order to do that successfully, they're supported by a whole host of people, including those shown on the on the screen here, like trainers and transportation management, planning and scheduling. And they have a whole bunch of bureaucracy standing around 
not doing the work, but pretending they're helping people that do the work. This is called bureaucracy, folks. Finance, information technology, field operations, bus and rail maintenance, service workers, purchasing in stores, customer information, and many more that aren't shown on here with lots of different jobs to set them up so that they have the tools, the equipment, the time, the training uh, to be able to uh, provide that mobility and service for all of our customers. Right. And right now you're failed. You're 20% cut. You have no safety teams. I have heard them recently a couple of times. I think they have one team out there. There's no real actual, you need, you need like four teams out there. One on the West, one in the Central, and two in the East. Next slide. Uh, and that alignment and the priorities are essential because uh, it's all it all comes down to capacity and choices, just like every large organization. Every good thing we do means that there are fewer resources for every other good thing that we could do. Yeah, like capital projects. You know, it's absurd to write this down. Billions and billions and billions on shit that's not needed. Red line, pow, re, you know, tear down the whole fucking place, rebuild it. This is insulting, man. Yeah, you you waste money on the one hand by the billions, and then you have the, you put this on the screen. This is so status quo. You know, we've heard this from every level of government. Well, we can't help you get health care for all, but we can give $35 billion to Ukraine. This is the same shit we hear from every level of government. So we've got to be focused. When it comes to people, when it comes to helping you, we don't have the money, but we have the money for everything else. Think about what we're trying to accomplish. Next slide. We're driven by our purpose, which is outlined in one of the pages uh, on. Let's read this. Support our economy and provide equitable opportunity, right? Ease congestion. No. Provide mobility for those with few options. Well, that's basically all you do do. Help shape the future of the region. That's bad. Reduce emissions. And so, well, that seems to be the. Part of the build back better. Destroy the current and then build it back with this new global warming baloney that uh, isn't actually going to do anything, but it pretends to. The business plan to support our economy and provide equitable opportunity, to ease congestion, to provide mobility for those with few options, to help shape the future of our region, and to help reduce emissions and support environmental sustainability. Next slide. Okay. Uh, and the Here it is, Rippy. <laughs> The what's the word for this hexagon or what is this thing? The overall structure of the business plan and our efforts is guided by the strategy map, which identifies our vision, mission, and values at the top, and then 12 goals in four categories that support that. One of the small tweaks we've made this year is to actually number the goals, not necessarily saying that one is more important than the other. But by numbering them, it's easier to keep track. It's easier to identify the goals and the objectives and how they connect. Uh, and so that's shown here. Uh, we pay attention to customers. We pay attention to internal business practices, people in innovation, and then the financial foundation um, for what we're able to accomplish. Next slide. Our strategic priorities, as we discussed um, in, and uh, uh, reviewed at the last board meeting are shown here with ridership, financial stewardship and capacity, employees and employee experience, community and partnerships, and safety and equity, diversity and inclusion. Uh, and as Director Wei talked about at the, at the beginning of the meeting, talking about the TIAC meeting where we discussed these as well, Safety and equity and diversion and inclusion are shown touching all of the other priorities because they need to be reflected in each of those and constantly in line. Next slide, please. I to get some meat, sorry. Uh, there are something like 70 measures in the business plan that we track to understand how we're doing. And they reflect on a number of different uh, goals and objectives. And you can see... They say on-time ridership is 90%. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, See those in the pages of the business plan. 
Uh, I have in the past, uh, a few years ago, reported on all of the business plan measures to the board. Uh, I think that becomes tedious for everybody to, for me to talk kind of. Oh, wait, here's some interesting. 7.5% turnover. Okay, that means for every uh, 100 day hire, only 7.5 people don't stay. That's interesting. I thought it was higher than that. Apparently not. According to this, I don't know. Can you believe it? I don't generally believe anything that comes out of this organization because their government, like every other government entity, they lie to make themselves look good and there's no way you can check their figures. Talk through it, but uh, we've, we've done, done our best, best to make, make it very easy to review in the document and you can see last year's performance and this year's performance so you get a better sense of trend than in previous years as well. But I'm going to hit the highlights of nine measures out of that 70 that uh, reflect on our priorities, on our strategic priorities. And you can see a number of them are, are heading in the, in, the direct, in the right direction. That green star is on target. A red octagon is off target. We don't have any this year that are in the yellow triangle uh, caution category uh, within the priority measures, but we do in the larger sense. Uh, so uh, I'll just speak to a few of these briefly. You heard at the during the operations report earlier today that our ridership is up uh, 25 percent since last year. That is, of course, still down considerably since before the pandemic, but we are making progress since after the, the pandemic. Uh, began. Our on-time performance for bus is uh, on track, uh, on target, actually above target. Uh, that has the little COVID symbol asterisk there because though traffic has um, relatively returned to where it was pre-pandemic, there still is some impact of traffic on on-time performance, and so we need to recognize that. We have done a lot to improve on time. I don't believe that number. I'm sorry, I don't. It's probably like Max, you know. When Max gets behind, they just assign it a new train number, and now it's on time. I'm sure this doesn't take into account missed trips, canceled trips. I know they, they jerry-rig all of these numbers. I know that for sure. Performance, uh, but, but some, some of it is being helped by, by, by changes in traffic and changes in commuting patterns. Our collisions there for bus specifically are on target, uh, and you can see the collisions for the other modes in the longer list in the business plan. For safety, our lost time injuries rate is above target, and so that's something to track, uh, to pay extra attention to. Uh, we have two measures of equity, diversion, and um, uh, inclusion. Uh, specifically out of our equity analysis that we do each year, where we are on our oh, sorry, on target with on-time performance and vehicle assignments. I have no idea what that nonsense is. Line serving areas with a higher number of people of color and low income compared to other ones. I, you know, I don't, I don't be believe that either. I think that's just garbage. Uh, for, for those lines that serve neighborhoods with higher than average populations of persons of color, and or low income. Uh, on the bottom line, the employee experience, you can see our turnover percentage minus retirements is higher than target we are experiencing as. Uh, I thought it was a lot higher than 7.5%. I thought it was more like 30%. As far as I know, pretty much all employers are experiencing a higher than normal turnover uh, during the, the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and that's reflected here, always something to pay attention to. And you've heard some of our efforts to recruit to help bring in new employees as well uh, earlier during the meeting. The financial stewardship and capacity there, you can see our strategic financial plan guidelines, uh, which we'll be confirming um, and updating for the final. And then the financial stewardship and capacity, also the bus operating cost per vehicle hour, has increased, uh, in, and that is, is I think, that? In, in keeping with uh, a number of costs that are going up somewhat during the pandemic and uh, looking at some of the pressures on operating uh, a smaller 
set of hours uh, with it, without the ability to reduce costs as quickly as we um, uh, as we see the demand decrease. Next slide, please. This is the first of four slides that just summarize our goals and objectives. And this is a somewhat new way of, of portraying them. We still got the color coding that matches up to the pyramid uh, for categories. These are the customers' goals. You can see the objectives aligned with the goals. And for the first time, instead of numbering just the objectives, we've numbered and lettered the objectives to go with the goal number so that they're easier to connect to each other. Uh, just reading the goals across the top, and I'll leave you to read the objectives on your own. This includes the satisfied riders, satisfied community stakeholders and employers, and supportive broader community. And then you can see the detailed objectives below those, and they're available in the, the business plan, of course. Uh, next slide, please. Under the internal businesses practices, the three goals are deliver safe, efficient, and equitable service. I, you know, man. I really can't watch this. You know, this is, I can't, this is just exactly what I thought it would be. Bullshit. You know, I'm li you're listening to bureaucrats talking about bureaucracy and I don't, I'm not interested in listening to this. I mean, I should listen to it, but it's garbage. Okay. What's the point? They're talking garbage. We don't even know how much of it is true over and out.